everyone uh, and good morning good evening uh, good afternoon to all over the world uh, my name is Mahal Bhair I'm uh, from uh, College of Medicine at Imam Bihamad Hassan University in Saudi Arabia and now currently in the emergency department of King Fahad University Hospital uh, at Saudi Arabia I'll be uh, talking about uh, thyroid storm as a new presentation and complication uh, for one of the interesting uh, case reports that we uh, published uh, last month. Uh, and uh, let's go through this journey. Uh, to begin with, thyroid emergencies are not common, hence they are a very serious life-threatening uh, condition. Uh, in, in 1926, uh, the first thyroid storm was described as the crisis of exothalamus goiter by Leahy. The typical clinical manifestation of hypothyroidism are exaggerated in the thyroid storm particularly marked by rexia, tachycardia, and alternative status uh, as uh, agitation, delirium, or coma, which are uh, the common features of thyroid symptoms. Uh, the diagnosis is mainly based on clinical criteria as uh, thyroid hormones measurement do not help in differentiating between thyroid storm and hypothyroidism uh, at the presentation. Uh, there are rare and severe representations for thyroid storm, uh, like what we faced in, in our case, uh, which I'll be showing in the coming slides. A uh, few case reports uh, that uh, uncommon complication of thyroid storm, such as fulminant hepatic failure, which will increase uh, the risk of mortality and permanent complication if associated or secondary to congestive heart failure, or in other words, uh, some patients might go to a multi-organ dysfunction. Uh, it has been noticed also that atrial fibrillation, uh, which is uh, the most common cardiac complication of hyperthyroidism, and it's occurred in 15% of the patients with hyperthyroidism, as it is associated with higher risk of thromboembolism that often involve uh, the central uh, nervous system. I'll be taking uh, you with me in, in, uh, in the presentation of a rare case of thyroid storm which is precipitated by uh, a Boston bar virus and causing fast atrial fibrillation complicated by congestive heart failure and fulminant hepatic failure. So uh, to go with the cancer presentation, we had a patient who was a 46 years old Bangladeshi male. Uh, he wasn't known to have any medical or surgical illnesses. Uh, he's not on any medication. He presented to uh, our emergency department with a 10 days history of subjective fever, which was on and off. It is associated also with generalized abdominal pain and vomiting for multiple times. After that, he developed a palpitation at the day of the presentation. And uh, the palpitation is the most uh, uh, severe symptoms that he had that let him come to the emergency department. He denied any history of altered mental status, no loss of consciousness, no syncope, there was no chest pain, no diarrhea, and no constipation. Uh, in physical examination, uh, the heart rate was around 114, 150 beats per minute, and the respiratory rate was uh, 27 breaths per minute, so he, he was tachypneic and tachycardic. Uh, the other vital signs were within the normal range. Uh, when we saw the patient directly, the patient looked very, very ill. And he was also in pain distress uh, from his uh, abdominal pain. Uh, but uh, at the same time, he was conscious, alert, oriented, time, place, and person. Uh, so there was no uh, alternative status at that time. Uh, when we complete the examination, we found a brisk carotid pulses and also distended neck veins, uh, which was also noticed when we started the examination. Uh, chest examination was unremarkable. Abdomen examination uh, was uh, soft and lax, but the abdomen was distended, a bit distended. Uh, he had uh, the most uh, tender area, which was the right upper quadrant. And also uh, we found that he has a uh, hepatobigin. Uh, and regarding the face examination, the patient had a clear, obvious exothalamus. Uh, in his eyes. Uh, otherwise, there was no any other uh, clinical signs in this patient. 
we, we started uh, doing ECG as the patient had uh, a palpitation at that time. And the 12 lead ECG electrocardiogram showed atrial fibrillation with rapid ventricular uh, response, as you see in this ECG. Uh, and uh, then uh, we did also a bedside echocardiogram, which showed severe left ventricular ejection fraction of 30%, uh, global hypokinesia, hypokinesis, uh, impaired right ventricular function, dilated atria, dilated inferior vena cava, and high filling pressure. Uh, we did also some laboratory tests, and the most significant laboratory findings were that the liver enzymes were, were shooting high, uh, and uh, TSH, which, which comes later, uh, a bit of uh, delaying, waiting for TSH, but it was a very low uh, TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, and also high T3 and T4. Lactic acid also was elevated in the patient. Also, he, he was having prolonged PT and abnormal uh, INR. As you see in front of you, this is the liver function test. Uh, um, alkaline phosphatase, the SGOT, the uh, SGBT, all, all of them were shooting. Also, uh, the LDH. The coagulation profile, which is uh, prolonged PT and uh, INR. Uh, also, the thyroid hormones, TSH, was very, very low. Also, uh, uh, T3 and T4 uh, were uh, high. So this is will give us uh, a hint that the patient having uh, some sort of hyperthyroidism versus thyroid storm. And uh, I'll come to uh, the criteria where which let us go to uh, thyroid storm. Uh, also, uh, the clear signs of exothalamus. Uh, this is the hint that we took and went through uh, the diagnosis of thyroid storm uh, as the diagnosis of the patient. Also, we did the SARS-CoV-2 uh, PCR at that time because uh, it's in the pandemic area, in the pandemic time. So uh, we were not sure of the patient's picture coming. Uh, it's relating to uh, COVID-19 or not, so, but the patient was uh, negative for uh, COVID-19. Uh, other uh, uh, investigations as uh, calcitonin was high, CRB also was higher than the norm. Uh, the first difference diagnosis, as I mentioned, that came to our mind was thyroid storm as we took the uh, hint of exothalamus and also the laboratory um, uh, test that we did. Uh, the decision uh, was to treat accordingly. So, uh, we wanted to start the patient in a proper analog, but uh, as uh, to treat uh, the thyroid stomach, the thyroid psychosis. But since the patient has a vector of heart failure and beta blocker uh, is controversial, controversial to use in, in, in a heart failure patient. Uh, so uh, a small dose of propanolol was given, just only one milligram, but the patient directly conditions uh, started to deteriorate within two minutes after giving the propanolol. He received only one milligram. We were planning to give him two milligram, but uh, we only gave him one milligram and he started to uh, patient to be disoriented, sweating. Uh, so the rest of the dose was good. Um, after that, the patient started to be uh, hypoxic. So he was placed in, in, in uh, by bad but he didn't tolerate it. So uh, by bulb was removed and was placed on an breather mask with uh, a good response. The patient also at the same time, as I, men I, as I mentioned in the last uh, couple of slides, he was having a trial population. And uh, it is associated at the same time with acute heart failure, which was most likely secondary to the thyroid storm. Uh, so the initial treatment of propanolol failed. Now a shared decision between emergency and cardiology was made to DC the patient, cardiovirgin, uh, and uh, patient was sedated with uh, ketamine and propofol, and then a synchronous cardiovirgin with 100 joule was given. Uh, the patient returned to normal sinus rhythm, but directly he started to be apneic. So uh, intubation was done directly for the patient, and then the patient shifted to ICU. Uh, during the admission, uh, multiple consultations for the patient, 
uh, for multiple surfaces, uh, at the trines and uh, internal medicine to confirm the diagnosis and more laboratory uh, tests were done. And one of the tests that we have done for viruses, so uh, monospot test for infectious mononucleosis screen was negative. But the anti-EBV viral capsid antigen uh, IgM antibody was positive. Uh, other uh, all toxic registers screening uh, were negative at anticipation. Um, so we confirmed the diagnosis of thyroid stone by using uh, BWPS uh, criteria, uh, and which was a 65 point, 25 as tachycardia more than 140, uh, 10 points for present atrial fibrillation, 20 as severe congestive heart failure, and 10 points as uh, for vomiting and abdominal pain. As you see, this criteria can give us uh, that uh, when you collect the points, it is a thyroid storm or, or the storm is unlikely uh, in regards of uh, thermal regulatory dysfunction, cardiovascular, congestive heart failure, gastrointestinal hepatic dysfunction, central nervous system disturbance, precipitating factors. Okay, uh, uh, as the patient was in ICU, the thyroid ultrasound was done. Uh, and and the, they reported that uh, both thyroid glands lobes were mildly enlarged in size, uh, slightly wavy surface, a moderate heterogeneous parenchymal uh, texture with moderately increased vascularity. Color blood scan gave the impression of diffuse goiter with signs of autoimmune thyroiditis. And this is, can give us uh, an information that the patient might have uh, a thyroiditis before coming to the hospital and it was undiagnosed or the patient doesn't know that he has uh, a thyroiditis. Uh, also, uh, uh, we diagnosed the patient having fulminative hepatic failure with liver condition, uh, which was seen by a CT scan, uh, which was done for, for the patient, uh, um, as giving the impression of passive hepatic condition. Patient was intubated for 10, 10 days in, in, in ICU and then extubated, moved to regular ward. Five, after five days, he was discharged home and uh, with medications. And then after one month follow-up, uh, the patient came and uh, the patient's symptoms improved. And the last TSH level was within normal range with uh, uh, So the points that we had to discuss in, in, in this case that uh, Thyroidostome is a sudden life-threatening episode of thyroid toxicosis. Thyroidostome usually present in patients with non-hyperthyroidism disorders. Uh, nevertheless, some studies reported variable presentation of atypical thyroidostome, including acute abdominal pain, seizures, heart failures, hepatic failure, and cerebral uh, function. Thalmanic uh, hepatic failure also, is which, which is defined as encephalopathy or severe coagulopathy that occurs within eight weeks of onset of symptoms of liver uh, disease. John, this is usually the first symptoms of liver failure, which begins uh, the measurement timeline of, uh, to FHF. Thalmanic uh, uh, hepatic failure is extremely rare complication for either storm, as there were a few case reports uh, um, of uh, FHF, which is associated with thyroid storm as there was uh, seven cases. And uh, recently in 2020, uh, another eight, uh, eighth case was published. And our case will be the ninth uh, case report that has uh, permanent hepatic failure uh, associated with thyroid stone. So the similarity was what the cases were few, but uh, the past medical history of the patient was unclear. Uh, um, as the patient not known to have any uh, thyroid disease, although uh, we found at the ultrasound uh, for the thyroid that he might have uh, he might have the thyroiditis uh, and diagnosed. Also, uh, one of the uh, complications of thyroid stone was multi organ dysfunction, and it is one of the severe and life threatening complications of thyroid stone, which could lead to mortality if not managed at the time of presentation. Uh, multi-organ dysfunction is a big concern to be considered in any patient coming with thyroid stone. Heart failure, hepatic failure, renal failure. As in our patient, he started to have hepatic failure and, and, and heart failure, uh, but uh, he didn't start to have renal failure. We started directly the management with uh, a good improvement. 
also it has been controversial that using propanolol in case of heart failure is contraindicated due to its effect on deterioration of the patient's hemodynamic status and leading to mortality. But recent studies suggest the opposite, which is that propanolol is a safe and well tolerated and has beneficial effect to ventricular function in heart failure patients. In our case, the patient deteriorated after receiving one milligram of propanolol as he was having a triple ablation. Uh, we stopped the dose after deterioration, and this will raise the susceptibility that the propanolol to be might be the leading cause of deterioration of the hemodynamic status of the patient as he had a uh, heart failure. Uh, but uh, uh, it was one of the uh, raising susceptibility of this uh, issue. One of the new evidence that epstein bar virus, which is the primary agent of infectious mononucleosis, uh, it usually persists worldwide as a subclinical uh, infection. It is known that EBV is related with uh, lymphoproliferative diseases and malignancies in the long term of chronic exposure. Recent evidence support the pre existing EBV infection and thyroid cancers and thyroid tumors, and it is found that EBV plays a significant role in developing thyroid tumors and thyroid cancers, especially in papillary thyroid carcinoma and younger age. The presence of acute EBV infection does not usually cause a thyroid storm or autoimmune thyroid disease. But recently, uh, ABV infections was reported. Uh, a paper was published in 2020 that um, uh, uh, although ABV is not the only agent uh, responsible for developing autoimmune disease, it is not fully understood and it can be considered a contributory factors. As in our case, we found that, that the patient have uh, EBV positive. So, um, we might say that ABV was uh, the contributory factors uh, on making uh, uh, the failure of some in our patient. We can conclude that although for the failure is a rare complication failure of some, we should consider it more and it might lead to higher rate of mortality if not managed early. Also, multi-organ dysfunction is seen in many patients as a complication of failure of some, which plays a significant role in the course of clinical presentation and management of the case which needs to be always investigated. Recently, the evidence supported the pre-existing epstein var virus in thyroid in some cases, which, were, which may contribute to unexpected clinical uh, complications. Furthermore, uh, studies are needed to address the relation between EBV and thyroid storm to enrich the current uh, evidence along with other uh, complications. Thank you uh, for your uh, listening. Uh, I'll be happy to receive any questions. And uh, uh, before I end, I would like to thank uh, the organizing committee for uh, their invitation. And in this barcode, you can find the article uh, if you want to read more about uh, the case with uh, the details. Uh, this is my email here. If you have any questions later, you can uh, email me on this. Thank you so much.